My name is Artie Jones, and I'm the executive director over Clearly College Park, the business and industrial development authority for the city of College Park. And with me today, I have Ms. Kirsten Moat, who serves as the program director for the Aerotropolis CIDs. Welcome, Kirsten. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. All right, cool. All right, well, Kirsten, you know, I've, um, I've worked with you almost four years now, mm -hmm. since almost the inception of the Aerotropolis CIDs. Could you please explain your official title and exactly what you're responsible for and also what the Aerotropolis CID is responsible for? All right. Uh, so I'm the program director for the Community Improvement District, and Community Improvement dis and Districts have been around Atlanta uh, since the late 1980s. Um, and the best way to kind of describe it is an HOA for commercial and industrial property owners. Uh, these are property owners that have agreed to tax themselves an additional amount on mm -hmm. top of their normal property taxes. And that goes into our funding. We have a board of directors and we make improvements around their properties to increase their property value. Uh, and so we focus on four key areas, public safety, beautification, transportation infrastructure, and wayfinding. Um, and as you mentioned, you've, we've been working together since the inception. So Aerotropolis Atlanta Community Improvement Districts is actually made up of two community improvement districts, okay. one in Fulton County and one in Clayton County. Uh, Fulton County began in 2014. Yeah. Um, and Clayton County began in 2015. And so uh, our staff all began in 2015, and we've been working with College Park ever since. Okay. Tell me, how many staff do you have with the Aerotropolis CIDs? So we currently have our executive director, Gerald McDowell. We've got myself, which I am responsible for all of the beautification, transportation, and wayfinding projects. Okay. We've got John Antoine, our director of public safety. Okay. We have uh, Charlie Vaughn, who is our director of communication and marketing. Yes. Stan Reese, who is our project manager, and then Kiana Cannon, who's our executive administrative assistant. Right. So pretty small staff, but we're able to get a lot ac accomplished. Yeah, you guys are very, um, are very, very um, active in the community. Um, there are virtually no boundaries. Um, you guys work with numerous municipalities, mm -hmm. um, muni uh, numerous counties, mm -hmm. um, numerous organizations just in general, and a, a lot of uh, property owners. So tell me, um, how important is collaboration and working together to the CIDs? Well, I think collaboration is the key to our success. And it's something that uh, we've had to work on uh, very hard over the past four years. But what has been fantastic is that all of the cities and the counties and the stakeholders and the property owners, you know, they've all been willing to come to the table and be a part of that conversation. Um, we would not be able to get very many projects done without the collaboration of our cities. Most of our projects uh, cross city boundaries, um, and therefore we have to have everybody at the table so that we can come to an agreement about how to move forward and how to make progress so that everybody is successful. Um, and clearly our, our end goal is economic development, uh, bringing more businesses, bringing more residents to South Metro. Okay. So I'm going to kind of jump away from the Aerotropolis CIDs and kind of jump over to you personally. Yeah. Where are you from? How did you get here in life? Um, when you were growing up as a little girl, did you say, I just want to be a program director for, the, for a CID? How did you get to this point in your life? Uh, good question. So <laughs> I am originally from Denver, Colorado. Wow, uh, long ways from home. Yes, but we, we moved around quite a bit when I was young, but I moved to Atlanta back in 1991. Um, I think I was in first grade. Okay. So I consider myself from Atlanta. Um, grew up here, went to high school in Fayette County, okay. um, and I went to college at Georgia State and got a degree in uh, geography, which 
was not necessarily planned. Yeah. Um, but my dad had a degree in geography and my mom minored in geography. So wow. it runs in the family. It runs in the family. Um, and then I worked for the city of Noonan for a year um, managing their stormwater program. Okay. And it was when I fell into the creek in January that I realized that I wanted to go back to school okay. <laughs> and do something a little different. Okay. Uh, so I went to Georgia Tech and got uh, my master's in city and regional planning. Um, I had the full intention of doing community development and uh, affordable housing development, but I graduated in 2010. Uh, so the market was not very good for any sort of development. <laughs> um, and so I kind of landed in transportation with a consulting firm. Um, and from there, it was actually one of my uh, colleagues from grad school that told me that Gerald was looking for some assistance for a new CID that was being created because she had worked with him um, at another CID previously. So okay. he contacted me, and I guess the rest is history. Right, right. And then also, um, I noticed that you got married mm -hmm. um, recently, or I guess it's not all that recent now, um, but kind of tell us about balancing family life and CID work because you guys start meetings early in the morning and into the evenings you're at city council meetings you're at county meetings you mm -hmm. know county commission meetings tell me how you uh, a little bit of how you balance your uh, your time yeah well so um, my husband Kyle um, we've been married for two years a little over um, we actually met when I was at the previous consulting firm. He works for the Department of Transportation. Okay. Uh, and so we worked together for a number of years. Did he major so in geography? He did not. He majored in theater. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Department of Transportation, theater. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So Good. he majored in theater, but uh, he, he was with the planning group um, at the Department of Transportation and has gone on to... Uh, work in the human resources and he manages all their training but um, so he understands the field he right. he understands the process for all of these pro uh, projects and he is incredibly supportive of my success and me being able to complete my job uh, the way that it needs to be completed so um, as far as balancing I'm not sure that I'm the best at it mm -hmm. uh, but I've got a great support system through him and, and the rest of my family that um, when I do have some time off, we can, we can relax and enjoy it. And it's not just taking care of all the, all the chores that have to be done outside of work. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. And you, you talked about <coughs> success. I heard that you uh, recently received an award. Ooh, did I receive an award? <laughs> I did. Um, so engineering, the, the American Council of Engineering Companies uh, recently gave me an award as one of the top 50 women in the know for for Georgia. Wow. So, yeah, it's quite That's an impressive. honor. impressive, yes. Very quite much. an honor. Um, yeah, no, they, they're a great organization. Um, they, they follow all things transportation, uh, and it's, it's quite an honor to be named, you know, one of the 50 in, in the state. Right. Well, tell me this. Um, what type of uh, new initiatives are, you know, is the CID taking on right now? Mm -hmm. And kind of expound on some things that you are looking forward to kind of getting involved in in the future. So on the public safety side and the beautification side, we've got ongoing initiatives uh, that that's kind of our baseline. Mm -hmm. um, all, all the other projects are kind of extra tidbits, but what we really want to focus on is maintaining the safety of the area and maintaining the beauty of the area and keeping it clean and putting in new landscaping where we can, but really maintaining what we already have. So. Those are the things that we always focus on. 
Um, but some other initiatives that, that we're working on, I mean, we work in every single mode of transportation. So we've been working on a greenway plan, which is a multi-use trail plan with all of the cities. Okay. We completed that master plan last year. Uh, we just completed a transit plan, which we've been presenting to all of the cities uh, for their consideration for adopting the plan. Okay. So we work in transit. We have an ongoing freight plan uh, where we're focusing on how to get commerce in and out and around the area without disrupting other aspects of the community. Uh, we work on general roadway infrastructure. We've got the um, Camp Creek at I-285, Diverging Diamond Interchange, which yes. is currently under construction, which mm -hmm. we can go into a little more detail about. Uh, but we also look at other intersections, um, which may be full-blown intersections, redesigns, or it may be just a modification to an intersection, such as uh, a roundabout instead of a two-way stop. Right. Okay. Well, since we were talking about the diverging diamond, um, I've been in College Park for five and a half years. Uh, that's when I moved here, and you know, Camp Creek Marketplace is pretty much the power center for the area. That's where we do most of our shopping, and we go and we visit there for movies and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But traffic is horrendous. Um, I can't put it into words. Now, Atlanta in general, traffic is horrendous, but especially Camp Creek. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the diverging diamond and what it will mean to um, the South Metro area once it's completed. Uh, so a diverging diamond interchange is a relatively new concept, although I believe this will be the fifth, uh, we call them a DDI, uh, a DDI in um, in the state uh, and it is really focused on clearing out traffic where you have a lot of left-hand turns which in this case this interchange has a lot of left-hand turns what makes this interchange even more complicated is that we have a lot of freight going through this interchange more than most in Metro Atlanta um, and so this interchange is going to uh, cut down on left-hand movements in front of other traffic. And so if you can visualize driving on the right-hand side of the road and then as you're approaching the interchange, you actually move over to the left-hand side of the road. It's scary. It, it, I've, it I've can be. It, and it's, it's, it's very foreign to me. I've, I've driven through several diverging diamonds and it's like you don't feel right. It's almost like driving on the wrong side of your car, you it, know. It is. It is. And so, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to kind of get used to the idea of switching over to the other side of the road to go across the bridge and get on the interstate if you're making a left-hand turn. Um, but it is actually safer than the interchange that is out there right now. Right. And there'll be lots of light, lots of signs, lots of pavement markings to keep everybody in, in the right track. But we're really excited that it's going to uh, – not cut down on the number of cars that go through there, but it will make it more efficient for cars to go through there and you won't have the traffic backup that you're seeing today. Okay. Um, what, what we're also excited about with that interchange is there was an opportunity to partner with the Department of Transportation and provide some additional enhancements to really make it a gateway for the area. Mm -hmm. um, and so we we're so thankful for College Park and East Point and Fulton County. Um, to partner with us to uh, put in some added features like landscaping, um, up, upgraded light fixtures, upgraded fencing so we don't have chain link right. running across the bridge, really things that are just going to make the interchange pop and hopefully create uh, some identity for the area. We intend on putting in some signage to kind of brand the area. Um, and we really think that that's going to help attract people to that interchange and then go on and explore other things that are on Camp Creek. Okay. So tell me this. The Diverging Diamond Interchange, um, what is the budget on that particular project? So the interchange itself um, is around $13 million. Okay. Um, I think I have that right. 
<laughs> plus or minus one or two million. Mm -hmm. um, so but the it is a lot of money. Um, but it's actually it's actually more cost effective than if they were to completely rebuild the bridge. So um, this is you know kind of like I said, a relatively new concept and one that you can do on existing infrastructure rather than having to replace everything. In addition to that, uh, the cities, the county, and the CID are all contributing 1.5 million towards those enhancements that I mentioned. Yeah, so that's a great return on investment. As I visited you guys' website, it says for every dollar that you that's invested uh, that you guys have, I guess you leverage it about six times. Yeah, I mean that's that's the that's the key to community improvement districts. That's why they were created. Is that these private property owners realize that in order to get investment in their area, they needed to make an investment, and so it's all about leveraging those dollars. If the community improvement district can put in a few dollars then hopefully others will also be willing to put in a few dollars and those few dollars add up to a lot of dollars and we can get real improvements made that make a, a, an impact um, both economically, um, maybe even for, for traffic, uh, for safety, all of those things. Yeah, I was around, um, I first started working with the city of College Park, I was around at the inception of the CID mm -hmm. concept and it was kind of hard it was a hard sell initially to go to a, pr a private property owner and says, let me raise your taxes five mils and we're going to do this extra stuff for you. It's kind of a self taxation as you would have it. Um, is it as hard of a sell now that seeing all the positive results that's going on throughout the CID and getting more property owners to become a part of this CID uh, district? Well, y yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> um, we actually just went through an expansion for, for both of our CIDs, and we had more success this year than we have had in years past, uh, e except the initial inception, okay. where we had the most property owners join at one time. Um, but we, we did have more success, and I think we've really been able to build some confidence now that we've gotten projects on the ground you know we've been working on this for four years it takes some time to really get projects up and going mm -hmm. um that make an impact but I, th I think we're making a lot of great progress in that regard and i think people are seeing that success and and are feeling more confident that their money is going to go towards towards projects um, on the other side of it, you know, it's still a hard sell when you talk about increasing property taxes for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I know I don't want my personal property taxes right. to, to increase either. Uh, and so we have to convey the added value, not only with projects, but what else the CID can provide, which is being that voice for them when they're having an issue. So a perfect example is later today, I'm working with a property owner in a city to talk about some sidewalk maintenance that needs to be done and some lights that are out that are owned by the city. Um, and so we're gonna go out, we're gonna take a look at them and hopefully get some of those corrected. Right. Um, you know, we can be an advocate for property owners in rezoning cases or if they're having an issue with um, with the county for for some reason you know we can be that advocate and that voice for them so that's something extra that that we try to convey to potential property owners when we're trying to get them to join okay well, tell me this what is there a particular project um, that is kind of near and dear to your heart as far as the CID is there something that's especially uh, that you especially are um, embrace or are proud of? Well, we've got a, a potential project coming up that I'm really excited about, uh, okay. but we're we're trying not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Okay. We put in an application earlier this year, and it was a partnership between MARTA, the Center for Transportation and Environment, the CID, and Hartsfield-Jackson. 
uh, and it's a grant opportunity through the U.S. Department of Transportation okay. um, for an automated system, um, driving system demonstration, which basically means driverless vehicle. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so we're, we're really excited about the opportunity of potentially having one of the first demonstrations of this kind uh, in the U.S., possibly in the world. So we are proposing two 40-foot all-electric buses, and they're gonna provide shuttle service from the College Park Marta Station over to the International Terminal. And it'll be a year-long demonstration. Uh, so six months will be express service between the two. Okay. Um, and then six months, we'll add some stops along the way, possibly at Woodward, possibly at Delta, uh, some of the hotels along the way. Um, we saw this as a need to have some sort of circulator system between the International Terminal and College Park. We see a lot of demand in that area, and there's currently no service available. But what this will do, in, an, in addition to providing that service, will also test driverless systems in mixed traffic. And so don't worry, there will always be a driver on board. Oh, I was They'll, about to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> they will always be able to take over, uh, but it will have full capability to be driverless in mixed traffic for that five-mile distance. And so if we're awarded, fingers crossed, um, mm -hmm. we should hear something this summer. Uh, we anticipate that the demonstration would begin in as early as 2021. Wow. I was just trying to imagine a bus driving around with no one in the driver's seat, and it's um, that would be something to see. And I'm not sure if I'd really have the heart to be on it, but if there is a backup of a person being in there, then I'm thinking that you know I'll be okay with it. Yeah, and that's that's going to be a part of the process as well is to um, do a number of surveys during the before, during, and after the demonstration to understand how people feel about this system, uh, knowing that it may be driving without the driver, um, and can we build that confidence with them that it is in fact safe. Of course, we'll be doing a lot of testing on these vehicles before we let them go into mixed traffic, um, but we're, we're pretty confident that with all of the partners that we have on this project, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be able to implement something successfully and safely. Okay. Well, um, I believe two years ago you guys did an expansion in College Park where you were able to uh, expand and include all of the BIDA property that is now called the Airport City Project Area, which this property has been off the tax rolls for ever, you know, 15, 20 years at a minimum. And uh, what will it mean to the CIDs for this property to have development on it um, for the CIDs? Well, I mean, I think that with the size of the property, it's about 300 acres. 400. 400 acres. Um, it is going to be a catalyst for this area in general. Uh, I'm really excited to have been a part of the master plan charrette that took place last month. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the CID, of course, those properties putting back on the tax roll mm -hmm. will certainly help both with the city as as well as the CID. Um, I think it's going to provide a lot of opportunity for some new projects in the area uh, that directly benefit those property owners. That's what we try to do. We try to proportion our projects so that we provide benefits to all of the property owners. Um, you mentioned that we have multiple jurisdictions, but you know, we've got five jurisdictions and we span 15 square miles. Mm -hmm. And so any revenue that's brought in by a particular development such as Airport City, we want to make sure that that return is directly related or directly goes back to those property owners as best as we can. Okay, cool. Well, I know that the, uh, with, I guess with this particular development, the Airport City, they're looking at, you know, roughly five, 600 new homes, um, about 3 million square feet of office, 700,000 square feet of retail, 
12, 11, 1200 uh, keys or rooms for hotels um, and entertainment venues also within the same development. So there'll be a quite a bit uh, additional traffic as well as um, a lot of uh, new visitors in the area. And um, a lot of what you guys do, you know, working on aesthetics, wayfinding, working on infrastructure, working on, um, you know, public safety concerns that, you know, we're really going to need you guys support. And we've always received support from you guys. And we look forward to, you know, working with you guys in the, in the near future. And as we, you know, embark upon this new endeavor that will probably span, you know, 15 to 20 years and the overall build out of it completely. So, um, so tell me, um, as far as the, the, the CIDs, with you guys uh, being in so many jurisdictions, is there kind of a sweet spot as far as, is the goal of the CID to have the entire city <laughs> in the CID? Is it, or is it just the business district? Because I know that like residential properties don't count towards it. Yeah, so we really want to focus on the commercial and industrial areas mm -hmm. of the city um, I think we want to expand where it makes the most sense and where we have property owners that are excited about the CID which may not be every everyone and that's okay which we, we typically try to stay away from including residential areas um, because we can't provide the services that they need we we look to the city to provide provide those services but um, there are some instances where we may include some residential areas which are tax exempt they're not going to pay into the CID but we may use them so that we can continue to have a contiguous boundary which is required by uh, the state statute for CIDs um, I think we would be very excited to expand to other areas of College Park uh, we've already got, as you mentioned, kind of the airport city development. Um, we've got portions of the GICC development, uh, but we haven't really ex um, expanded into the Main Street District and also certain parts of the Virginia Avenue District. So I think those are areas that we'll continue to focus on and we'll continue to talk to property owners about their interests in the CID and, and hopefully we can expand. Yeah. Well, definitely Main Street and Virginia Avenue is kind of our front and back door, those particular areas I'd like to have included. But then also on the old national south side of College Park, that particular area I think would be um, is a, a, a definite area of focus. Um, I'm looking to um, set up the second tax allocation district within College Park on Old National and Godby Road. Uh, because that area has just huge potential, but it just it's just kind of sitting there. So um, I look forward to working with you guys and trying to encourage those property the property owners in those areas to um, to become a part of the, uh, the the CIDs. Yeah, and that that's a that's a great point. You know, um, one of the projects that we just partnered on is on Old National, and okay. and I think you're right. There's there's so much potential there. And we want to do more improvements, um, but we need to bring in some additional property owners, and we need to work together to see how we can make that potential come to fruition. But at the interchange itself, uh, College Park uh, just approved, mm -hmm. I think, $32,000 to landscape the medians and uh, do some upgrades to the bridge, primarily just painting the sidewalks so that they look uniform. Okay. Um, there's a lot of stained concrete out there. And so we came up with the landscape design um, and we're contracting with the painter right now. And so the medians have already been landscaped and cool. mulched and they look fantastic. Yeah. Um, and the bridge will be done or the sidewalks will be done uh, over the next few weeks. So I think you all approved that funding the end of April and we already have half of it completed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's another example of, of a great partnership between College Park and the CID. Yeah, one thing I've noticed about CIDs is that you guys get jobs done faster than government because we have to go through a lot of expansive bids and things of that nature. But, um, but you guys have 
you know, on call, these contractors to be able to get out and, and to do those jobs. So that's a great thing about CIDs. Um, and wrapping up, I have one last question for you. Um, what would you like to leave our audience today um, as far as the Aerotropolis CIDs or if they're interested in possibly becoming a part of the CID? Yeah, so we, we encourage anyone and everyone to follow us on social media. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, Aero ATL CIDs, uh, Aerotropolis Atlanta CIDs. You can search us, find us. Uh, we also have a website that has information about all of our projects, Aero, okay. um, Aero CIDs.com. Okay. Uh, and you can also visit our partner organization, Aero ATL.org. We we didn't really get into that conversation about okay. the two different organizations, but we do work together, and there are benefits uh, for property owners from both uh, from both organizations. Um, you can always contact us, uh, 404-349-2211. Give us a call. Somebody will always be there to answer your call, answer your questions, and uh, feel free to come to a board meeting. Um, just come and sit down and meet with us. We would love to love to talk more about what we do and um, how we can help property owners. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Kirsten, for visiting with me today and providing for our audience um, exactly what the Aerotropolis CIDs is and all the great things that are underway. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks for joining us today and hearing about the great things that's going on with the Aerotropolis CIDs. And if you would like more information about Clearly College Park, you can call 404-669-3764, or you can visit us at clearlycollegepark.com. And my name is Artie Jones, and I'm the Executive Director of Clearly College Park, where you will land in plain sight. Thank you for being with us. <music>